welcome back to Undiscovered. Wasn't Greg absolutely amazing? Like, I'm so glad that I was able to introduce you guys to him. But now we're moving on to another amazing singer, originally from Italy, and I cannot wait to have you guys learn more about him and all the amazing things he has done as a professional writer, performer, producer, all of the above. Please welcome what they call the great Dondino, Dondino Melchiore. Hello! Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Italian people hug. Yes, I'm a hugger too, so I'm glad that. (laughs) Amazing. So thank you so much for coming on my show. (laughs) Like, I feel like when I saw the great Dondino, I was like, oh my god, like, I'm having like. Someone amazing on the show. I'm like, plus, I'm honored. I feel like starstruck right now. No, I'm honored. (laughs) So amazing. So, originally from Italy. Yes. Correct. And how long have you been in the States for? Uh, Well, I came to the United States when I was 10 years old. Okay. Actually, nine and a half. And I was born in a little town called uh, Osada, Mm -hmm. Provincia de uh, Bolina in Italy. I still speak Italian, but. And uh, I came here when I was 10 years old. We. Uh, landed in Brooklyn, New York, okay. and I was oh, raised. Nice. And on the East Coast. Coast. Yeah. So that's where you probably get your performing, right? Being around all those people in New York. Yeah. And a lot of performances yeah. and music. So tell me a little bit about, obviously, you're, you're very well known for mm-hmm. singing and performing. Um, when did you find this passion and this love for doing what you do? Okay, well, when I came to this country, I couldn't speak English, but I played an accordion. Okay. okay. So when I was 13 years old, I had my first band, and through the music, I learned uh, the the English lyric, and through the English lyric, I started to understand, Mm -hmm. I started to speak, you know, English, but that was my first experience when I was 13 years old. Yeah, from there, you probably were like, oh my God, this is, I love it, right? I do, I do. Yeah, and so, your main um, style of singing is, what would you like? A lot of people, they say, well, you know, Don Daniel, what, 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 what do you sound like or what's your style mm-hmm. like you just said right. and the only way I can explain it is that uh, I'm a cross between perhaps maybe an Engelbert Humperdy oh, okay. with uh, uh, Tony Bennett a little bit yes, tuxedo singer love with that. the Dean Martin personality yes so know, all of the above yeah, yeah. Like, that's amazing yeah. yeah I know a lot of listen to a lot of those my dad was a big fan of um, all of those uh-huh. style of the music, so I'm very well versed yeah. in that style, so it'd be amazing. Um, I know that you do more than just perform, right? Yes. Like, so do you write your own music as well? I write my own music. I've mm-hmm. had a couple of semi hits, you know, uh, but mm-hmm. today the music industry is a little bit changed, Yeah. and uh, there are no longer the record companies, per se, so you produce actually your own material, you market it yourself. And yeah. YouTube and on yeah, and, and streaming on. Yeah, streaming. right now. Yeah. Streaming all the time instead of radio and things right. like that. Yeah. Um, but that, that's amazing. But you still have that talent. I would love mm-hmm. to have like, to listen to some of your originals and you can showcase on here, hopefully. Yeah, well, back. Next time, I'd love to come back. I'd love to have you. And so how long have you been in Las Vegas? Las Vegas, I came 1978. Wow. So yeah. you've seen a lot of change happening in the city. Yes, since you've been and I was fortunate enough to come when it still was the old Las Vegas mm-hmm. and it was making its transitions into Las Vegas of today. Yeah, know. and that's absolutely amazing. And where are some of the places that you've performed and showcased your talent? Well, I showcased my first show at the Sahara Hotel, oh, okay. August the 8th, 1979. Wow. And two weeks later, I was hired mm-hmm. on a small little hotel on Convention Center Drive. Michael Gahn owned the hotel. He owns the South Point. Okay. And he gave me my first job. Wow. And then from there, it's yeah, history. it's history. Yeah. You do one thing in Vegas, right. and it's still kind of like that now. You do one thing, and so it introduces you to so many yeah. more. You meet the same people. You run into the same people. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, some of them, they stay. Vegas kind of keeps the people. The right. city's made for you, you know. You become right. like yourself. Here you are, in Vegas, still watching yeah. all these different things, and the times change, and mm-hmm. music changing. Well, now you're competing with hockey and football. Yeah, and now good. sports are being introduced to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but Vegas is still great. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely amazing. So do you have any residency now? Any place that anyone can go see you at? Before? No, I am working on that presently. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in Iowa for about six years, and I left Las Vegas a couple of years back, and I had a theater in Branson, Missouri. Mm-hmm. And uh, after... 
I think it was about 12 years of the theater there, I came back to Las Vegas and things have changed, you know. But I'm speaking right now uh, to perhaps maybe a venue that I could be the residency. That, that's the residency. amazing. Yeah. yeah, I feel yeah. like that would be, because I would love to, you know, hint, hint, knock, knock, people yeah. that are listening, anyone that wants well, to hear great Dundee I do a lot of benefit shows, you know, and like, I just finished a show at the Italian American Club. Oh, wow, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And it was great. Yeah. They got great food. Right, yeah. obviously, who doesn't love some right. Italian food? That's amazing. But it's also probably good because when you're able to be part of your community and like yeah. represent them, yes. you know, a lot of people, I hate to say it, try to like share away when, you know, but I think maintaining that and bringing, right. you know, showcasing history, being around those people and being like kind of inspiring all those people yeah. um, to also do and be like you. And I'm well, pretty sure it's a lot of the time. What I've learned is. Yeah. But Las Vegas has been so kind to me in my life and my career, you know. And you have to give back. Yes. You have, to. You have to. And at one time, a couple of years back, I used to do 150 benefits per year. Wow. You know? Yeah. And uh, I, I was still doing today if they were around for me to yeah. do. Yeah. But that's absolutely amazing. You yeah. do. I mean, that's yeah, the purpose of my show here. Is yeah. that, you know, back when I was trying to, like, get to where I am now, you know, no one would give me chances like Right, and so uh, now that I have the opportunity to do that, I love to give the platform to someone to literally tell their story and show people why you, you right. know yeah. they need to know who you are, no yeah. matter how old, no matter how yeah. young, no matter what it is you do. Right, yeah. you can be a fashion designer, you can be a singer, actor, business owner, whatever yeah. it is. And I've learned something throughout my career. Uh, and I was a very young boy at the time, and he was his name was Jimmy Durante, who was mm -hmm. like an old time comic and stuff. And he said to me, He said, Remember, son, no matter how big you get. You're only as good as your last show. Yes. And if you keep that, that keeps you grounded. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Just remembering the hard work and what it made to get you there and yeah. who helped you get there. Sure. Um, I, that's what I always remember. I'm sure. Like, I love that about you. You seem very yeah. humble and you no, know it's... the people that have been there for you. And then you've also loved to inspire other people at the same time. Yes, I do. But be confident in who you are and still yeah. keep going. Confident you know what I mean? Who you are, yeah. And just continue to go. And so I love that. And because of that, you now are working on a documentary. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. The documentary right? is called Cowgirl to Showgirl. Mm -hmm. And it's the story of the iconic showgirl mm -hmm. of Las Vegas. And we had the opportunity to meet a young lady called Cindy Domaney. And... Uh, won't mention how old she is today, but she was a showgirl like back in the 50s. Okay, you know? wow. And uh, she was magnificent, she was gorgeous. But her life story, she used to be a cowgirl. She used mm. to work rodeos and wow. stuff like that. So from a cowgirl, she became a showgirl. And that's mm -hmm. the whole premise of the yeah. documentation. But it's also the history of Las Vegas. Yeah, a lot sure, of people, she's yeah. seen, she has an amazing story to tell. Right, right? there's a lot of people, you know, they think of a showgirl, uh, they think, not that we think that they're pole dancers, but they don't look at them as dancers. Yeah. And the showgirls, basically, at that time period, still today, they're trained, they have ballet. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, they're, yes. they're just... They're not the ones that normally, they're no. just the ones that walk the street. Right? No, like no, there's some that wouldn't perform, yeah. and they're amazing right. at what they do. And not only that, through the documentary, we found out that some of the uh, showgirls, well, most of them, they all maintain their own careers, and today there are two attorneys right here in town won't mention the names, but they were former showgirls and they're prominent attorneys today. Wow, that's amazing. That's yeah, great. that's great. And so along with that, you also have um, books that, yeah. you, that you write. Well, when I came people? to this country, I couldn't speak. Right. And to me, that just bothered me. And uh, so I, today, the second language in uh, the United States would be Spanish yes. or Mexican, let's yes. say. So I said, no, I said, we're going to have a foundation. I want to print bilingual books. So they're in English and Spanish. Yes. And if it helps just one kid, I'm cool. Right. Yeah, I'm that's cool. amazing. And we, the foundation uh, began 2009. And since 2009 to today, we have printed and given away over 30,000 books. Oh, amazing. Children. And yeah. I'm sure they absolutely appreciate yeah. it and adore yeah. the fact that they feel seen. Right? Because mm -hmm. that's what everyone wants to be. Like, they feel like they're not understood because they feel right. the pressures of needing to fit in. Right. Especially right. at that young age. You know, right. when they're growing up and, and, you know, if they actually have, like, immigrant parents, like, they just stick to their own community and they're there to they try to keep that going. Yeah. Right? Then only go with people that they know instead of really branching out right. and seeing their true potential. Right. Here. So and that's what's cool amazing. about the book, though, uh, it, 
it, it helps both. Uh, it, in other words, it would help the uh, English-speaking child mm -hmm. to cross over and learn Spanish yes. and vice versa, yes. and it brings a unity. Yes, and that's absolutely amazing. So these yeah. books, like, now, do you, you write them? Do you have a full thing? Are they, you know, fiction, non-fiction, are they, what's your... Well, they're, they're the children's the books children's in the age books. of uh, zero through seven, maybe eight years of age, and they're pictured books. Okay. You know. And the stories are unbelievable, like the cookie story. Mm -hmm. uh, oh gosh, my sunshine friend, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And the book, basically, when you open it, it's mirror image. Okay. So it's English on the left side oh, with the identical okay. uh, yeah. sketch mm -hmm. number to the right side. So you can always, you know, yeah. reference back and forth as okay. you're reading it. And plus, the numbers of the page are in English and Spanish. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. That's definitely for, you know, a child that they can maintain learning yeah. a non language at a young age. Yeah. And it's, you know, that would yeah. just... And amazing. the book comes with a theme song. Oh, wow. And it also comes with the narration as you turn oh, the pages. Yeah, that's fantastic. Cool. That's cool. Well, congratulations yeah, on that. Yay! Cool. And where can um, everyone buy and purchase these books? If they would... Readtomefoundation.org. And yeah. so do you, is there always new releases coming out? Do you, or yeah. do you, okay. Yeah. That, that right now we're working on a, uh, a book for Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And we have the mayor and the governor of Hawaii helping us and backing us up because they're learning that the Hawaiian language, they're starting to lose. Mm, yeah. And they want to hold on to it. Yes, you know? yes. It's very important. Yeah. You know, yeah. very big culture. To the culture. And, and things like that. And it's kind of sad when you do right. see that you can't help it. Since the time goes on, sometimes it just loses it. And it's... You know, I hate to see that, especially in evening. Well, it's even with me, you know. I, I, I speak Italian, but I speak the dialect of my hometown. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't speak the Alto Italian. You know. Yeah. But I never lost it. Right. And yeah, I which is great. And I, yeah, and I encourage bilingual. I encourage Yeah, that's like, absolutely speaking amazing. Speaking different languages for children. It's yeah. very, it's very, um, it's good to have when you're older. When you're younger, sometimes, you know, they watch me and say, no, I don't want to. Like, mm -hmm. I'm feeling embarrassed, embarrassed. And then as they get older, it's like, dang it, uh, I should have kept it, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're very proud of your Italian culture, which I'm very getting proud. very proud, and very it's amazing. Um, to, so do you maintain a lot of the traditions and the culture ever since you came to the States, and you do so I, now? I, I do at home, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I don't try to uh, brag about it outside my home, because that's like a private culture to me, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, and most of all, the food. Right, who doesn't food brings people together, we love I'm it. A frustrated chef. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of food, cooking, chef, like you have a cooking show. Yes. Yes, we need to talk about this. Okay, so we have a cooking show. Uh, it's, it's going to be like a celebrity cooking mm -hmm. show. And the name of the show is Men on the Range. Sounds like an old cowboy song. Yeah, <laughs> that's perfect for us Give in the me desert. A home right with a buffalo robe. <laughs> I can't do it in Spanish, though. So anyway, uh, yeah, a celebrity cooking show, uh, but not using the big type celebrities, you know, mainly using the chefs that are locally to promote mm, all the restaurants right. locally, you know, well, but also involving the public of cooking on the show also, and it's a 30-minute show, actually 20 wow. minutes, you know, excluding commercials. Right. Yeah. And that, that's amazing. I love how you're making sure the people in Vegas are going to see yeah. You know, and you're introducing the businesses. It's very hard to own restaurants and have all of those. And like, the most the most you want to do is just showcase your talent right. and your food. Well, and what I've learned though is, like in show business, now we say this: everybody wants to be a singer. You know, mm -hmm. now I'm learning that everybody wants to be a cook oh, or chef. That's the new thing. <laughs> and, and, and you look at all the TV shows. You know, there's so many cooking shows. Oh yeah, I think it's great. It's yeah, great. And I think the average person. Wants to cook, but mm -hmm. they don't have the proper direction of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. They read a can and they dump yeah. it and they cook. It's so simple to cook. Yeah. Yeah. So, what inspired you really to have a show? Did you produce the show? Did you? Are you? Um, yeah, we're, we're going to So you yeah. have it all in your hands in it with everything. Yeah. So, what inspired you really to do this in the I, way I love, that you're doing it? As I well? love television. Okay. And uh, a couple of years back, I had a, a TV show of my own for four years locally mm -hmm. and then it became regionally wow. and I was so impressed because I never realized how many people don't know what you're doing, who you are and how many people you could have as a, basically build up your following and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. 
Now today it expanded from that. Now it's streaming, yes. and to me that's that's the way to go. That's yeah, the way to go. that's amazing. And yeah. I'm, and what really inspired you to do this amazing thing of opening it up for locals? Is that something oh, yeah. that you're very passionate about? Is well, just going to Vegas, restaurants yeah. and, and talking to people, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of people can't afford to go to a restaurant, but that doesn't mean they cannot cook restaurant style food, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's so great. And so where can everyone, is this show premiered? Not yet. Not yet. So it's still coming. Still working. It's still it's working. Good. It's coming. Yeah. And so will this be streamed online? We'll see. Or do you have a... I don't know. Oh. I may. So this. <laughs> ah, so anyone watching, hit, hit. You know, the great yeah. Dandino has more... Well, I use hands in a lot of things. That'd be great for Las Vegas. And it, so as long as it makes sense. And what yeah. I've learned in my life is that when you do something, it has to work for both people. Yes. For all the people, yes. not only no, just yourself. Not only yourself, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I love that, and yeah. that's why I'm glad to have him on the show, because that's kind of how I feel, too. Yeah. Loving a, home, loving a helping hand, like showcasing other people, doing it for another. And then also, you know, I, I love that. I love just showcasing someone that people need yeah. to know. Yeah. And you have so many amazing things working on. And if I can help in any way Thank to get rid of people to know who you are and just be able to, you know, help you in can what your you goals cook? <laughs> a little bit, you know. I could do a lot of some home style uh, Cantonese, but you know, I'm Chinese. Chinese, yes. okay. So, well, very good friend of mine is Chinese. Oh, okay. and I'm working. And she gave me a a cookbook that's like a, a telephone book, you know, years yes. ago. And yes. I'm surfing through it and stuff, and now I'm starting to learn how to cook Chinese. Yeah. You know, so I impressed her, and she's authentic. I mean, she yeah. born, raised, you know, and she said, "Don Dino," she said, "I don't believe it." She said, your cooking is as good as in my country. She didn't say restaurant. Yeah. She yeah. said country. Yeah, because a lot of, I know, especially being in a Cantonese household, the styles are a little different in different areas of yeah. China. But they don't have follow books, right? No. Like they do by based on taste or what they're, they learn. Right. It's a very right. home style type of thing. So that's kind of like. There's everyone saying, "How am I?" I'm like, "I don't. You just, I just know, right? Yeah, like, what else? You just know. It's like put my mother, you know. She just yeah. made the recipe. Yeah, it's she just put ingredient. salt in her hand. And she just did right. it. Yeah, and it tastes amazing. And that's, that's why I think I don't bake, because mm -hmm. baking takes too much precision. Yeah. A teaspoon of this and a half a cup of that. Yeah. No, I just have to yeah. cook. I'm not a good baker either. So I, I do <laughs> like the cooking. I do have that. When I moved out here, my dad made right. sure I knew because I'd be out here alone, right? And I was right. like, I need to know how to, to cook for myself because he did all the cooking, right? Yeah. So, but that's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Like, I'm so glad that you're doing it the way that you're doing it. And um, I only wish you the best. And Thank I hope so that people much. watching this know how much talent this man has in all different areas. So from music to writing to producing to all of the above and business hands in every business. I hope that a lot of people will reach out to you and thank you. you know. I want to thank you for having no, me. No, I please. And I am honored. Maria. I am, yes, Maria, the producer, she is queen. All thanks to Maria. I get to meet these amazing people. Yeah. So thank you so much. I hope to have you on. Like I'm sorry like I really wish I could hear your voice. Oh. Today, but soon. Like I know everyone here is just like, what is what is it? I'm like, well we can you know, search. I know when I Google I, I, you, you can upload it. I could send yes. It. So, and then we can have you back on. You could do a lot of uh -huh. for all of us. That would be absolutely amazing. And hopefully, when you come back, your residency, all of these things are in play. I hope so. And then I can tell everyone, please come see the great Anino. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Thank it's been so an much. honor. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being Thank on this show. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And please, like I said, support, support, support. It's the best thing you guys can do for all these amazing talents. But after the break, I will come and say my thank yous and my goodbyes and give you guys a shout out. So once again, Don Dino, everyone. <laughs> See you after the break.
Salut